Well, again, Bow Tom's collectors. So it turns out there's three variations of these uh, fatty ground customs by the Takahara Tomi Tech. This is AGV12, and it's the A type. And uh, we'll take a look at it here. So I think this might no, it's used. The tape is broken. Here's some nice uh, promo picks and stuff like that. I actually have this one already. Uh, but this one has like a spike in its shoulder. That's what makes it different. And that's why I bought it. You can see the spike moves in and out. Missiles move up and down. Alright, let's just get into this thing. No instructions there. Maybe it's in here. Hmm? Yeah, okay. Before I go on, here's uh, MAHQ. Talks about the specs of this thing. And then it's basically a desert oriented uh, fatty. Whereas this blue one over here is like a space-oriented fatty, and I've reviewed that one before. All right, let's get back to this. Let's get back, of course. Yeah, we got a three-missile thing. We got a pilot, two extra open hands, a smoke discharge, I'm guessing, and then the robot itself. Okay. Let's go. Let's do the parts first, and then do the. We'll put all these little parts together first and review everything as a whole. I don't have a particular order in my reviews, how I do things. But here's a card that you can fold into a triangle. It's a labeled card. Here's a little file, spec file thing, but it's all in Japanese so it doesn't help me out so much. Fan club thing. And then the good old instructions and here it says 2006 up in the corner, September 2006. Okay, so uh, I've seen that gun before, and I think I can figure out the rest. It's nothing on the back. What's nice is uh, this thing is painted already, you know, even though it's on a molding screw. Granted, this, once you clip these pieces off, like here, you know, you're clipping off the paint as well. So you'll have, I'm going to have dark blue plastic showing through this lighter uh, grayish blue. But uh, I think it's better than just all raw plastic, right? So it's nice that they do this sort of stuff. I'm, I'm too lazy to repaint it, though. So these are ammo canisters. One goes on the weapon itself, and the other three are going to go into the backpack of the robot. Alright, this uh, handle here is if you want to display the weapon, you know, like in a diorama. But uh, I usually just use the, the handle that has the hand already on it, because I display the weapon on the character itself. Or the, not really a character, it's a tank. We have some gun barrels. So I think you have to actually trap this thing in here like this. So the, the short top, short barrel is on the top. Then you can put this thing in this, these two halves. It's a very tight fit. <sighs> no glue necessary. But yeah, you can see, you know, where it clipped off. Uh, that paint is no longer there. So yeah, that's unfortunate. I can live with that. I can live with it though. Then this uh, arm stock or butt stock goes on the back. Then we'll pop in the handle with the hand on it. Down here, it snaps in. And then there's a fold out handle here. I'm gonna pop this in this. <sighs> it's a tight fit, but once it gets in there, it's, it should be good. go so it can fold flush with the barrel or come out for action it's really supposed to be the other way 
but uh, it's got molding molding holes so I don't do it that way so this, this is an extra part again uh, the back of the hand here that's just friction fits on and there we go and then the ammo can goes on this rectangle here it's too bad that wasn't a different color the three remaining ammo cans are going to go into this backpack you can see there's these rectangles molded into the backpack and then the whole of the ammo can so you want to align it when you slide this in it'll be a little easier I think and then you can press it onto that rectangle okay. I really doubt those are going to fall out any taste any time soon seeing how they're mechanically trapped if you really want them on there I'm going to jam it closer with my toothpick or my fingernails there you go like that it's unfortunate is the uh, the molding cutoff wasn't placed down here you know they put him in a spot that's totally visible so that's too bad oh well all right So, well, we'll do these outer pieces first. Let me show you the inside. First, the head will rotate, and then this optic here will swing left and right inside this groove. So that's nice. And then you have to open the cockpit, you have to lift up the back. There's a hinge that has to clear this backpack. So you have to pull it up vertically like that, and then you can, you know, clear it. Uh, this, uh, you know, nice molded details of the seat some control panels and buttons and hoses and joysticks and whatnot this pilot is all the same color but he's got a little rectangle peg here so he won't like rattle around in there let's just get that in there come on there you go it's not sure you can paint if you want it to look nicer but then we push that down and that's how the pilot is in there uh, you'll have to look up the other videos. We're not going to show you in a sitting down position, but you basically swing the legs forward, you pull this thing down, and there. It just sits like that. It's kind of weak. <laughs> so, I never display it that way. It's, yeah. Imagine this is the ground. That's supposed to be how they get in and out. But this thing is so spindly looking, it's just weird. So, I'm not going to bother showing the rest of that. Okay. All right, we went over the head of the cockpit. The backpack has these two fragile plastic antennae, so if this falls down, it's gonna break. Keep that in mind. There's an open hole here. Unfortunately, I don't think anything goes there. It's, I'll show you in the other fatties. A different fatty uses that hole. But this hole here is this rubber flexible hose. Oh, you know what, maybe, I wonder. If you can go down in here, maybe it is supposed to be down there. It's just, eh, I don't know. Hard to say if it belongs up there or not. Let me check the good old instructions. You know what? I do think it's supposed to go in the bottom hole. Just uh, looking at this image here. See how that's, the bottom hole is clearly pretty long. All right, so, yeah, this is in the wrong place. I think the smoke discharger goes in the top hole. I think this arrow is supposed to actually get past something. It may have worked. Well, it worked well enough for the video. So this smoke discharger here goes into this hole there. And it's got some black paint in there. So those are the recesses, so that's pretty neat. And then we have this, uh, you know, three missile launcher that goes on this side here. And actually, both of those things can pivot up and down since they're on a round peg. All right. So over here we have a nice engraved, uh, painted black sci-fi letter of some sort. And then uh, the arm is on a peg with a ball in the end, so you can get a little bit of butterfly up and down like that. 
and then obviously you can rotate the whole thing around. This armor piece, no, it doesn't spin. Uh, let's show this. The forearm will spin. Interesting. This will not spin. Only the forearm spins. And then this around 90 degree bend for the forearm. And then you have a little cuff here to hide the joint of the hand. In fact, let's pop this off. So we're going to pop on the weapon. Oh. And from my experience, putting that, removing the cuff doesn't really affect the. There's almost no articulation uh, whatsoever. So the cuff. I don't think it really hinders articulation. It's really just there to mask off that gap. Okay. So, yeah, that's the weapon. I'm rolling this weapon of some sort. Uh, so, this shoulder is quite unique. So, this rubber hose goes through this arm. It's actually the same piece here. Uh, watch, I'll pull it. Yeah, so that's interesting. That's cool, actually. I like it. And then uh, this spike thing, according to the box, it goes back and forth. I'm not sure why, unless it actually is a spike launcher. Maybe it launches this spike, and but it doesn't come out with this spike. There's something, there's a tooth on the spike to keep it from falling out. Okay. So the torso here... It should yeah, separate so you can get some articulation front forward, uh, side to side, and then obviously you can rotate it, and then you can press it down, back down if you want. These little armor plates on the side hinge up and down, it says 2006 on there, so that's nice if you buy it without the box. The legs have a peg and a ball on the end, so yeah, in and out, front and back. You saw the knee thing. But uh, if it's not you know, extended, it's basically like a 90 degree bend. There's an armor plate for the front ankle area. And the ankle itself is a, like a curved uh, peg on a hinge. So you can hinge that. But then uh, there's a ball in the end of the foot, so you can get, get some rocker and stuff like that. And then there is a toe, toe hinge. All right. These wheels are the drive wheels, how it propels itself. That's supposed to be a wheel, but it's just molded. It doesn't move. All right. So all in all, pretty interesting. It's definitely different from the other fatties I have, and uh, glad I got it. This is a fist on this side. We took that fist off, and basically you have two open hands as alter alternatives. Uh, you know, I think I'll just leave the fist on. It's fine. All right, so there's three other fatties put out by the same company. This is the, the uh, most similar. It's the same color, but you'll see the shield on this one is blank and it's big. And it's got this double stack missile launcher. Uh, the smoke discharger is different as well. Uh, I think the knees are also different. They're angular, whereas these are more rounded. So that's the difference there. Uh, that one also has a hose. I didn't even notice that. This hose just kind of... Oh, I see. The hose is for the smoke discharger. All right. And then I have this other fatty ground. And this one has a round uh, missile launcher. The small shield. And uh, a different weapon. Uh, the small discharger but no hose there's nothing hold it plugging up that hole and then it still has I think the rest of it's the same actually mold wise just color is different really and one that is totally different is the space fatty because it's meant to be in space so it has this thruster pack and it's really plain as detailing unfortunately it's a very early uh, active gear I think all right so those are four Actic gear fatties for you, and I'm pretty sure that's it for the variations. If there is another one, please let me know. Um, yeah, that's it. Let's uh, get these other ones out of here.
All right, guys. Well, I think there's a few other Actic gears I have to get. So if you like this sort of stuff, just hang out, and I'll get around to reviewing them later. Thanks. Bye now.